welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is going to be both a relaxation session and a sleep session. And there'll be two versions. One without music, one with music in the background. Which is uh, provided by Kevin McLeod. And his details will be in the description. Now only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If I haven't already said that. Uh, I might have already said it, I can't remember. I say it so many times. So this really is just going to be a nice... A nice, calm, kind of a a chat, in a sense of, I know it's one way, you know, it's me talking at you, I guess, in a sense. It's just going to be nice and relaxing. And if you're listening purely... For relaxation as opposed to sleep then what you could do is sit in a comfortable chair making sure that it supports your body in the event of you know falling asleep and you could also perhaps set your alarm to wake you up if you had something else to do now Sitting in the chair doesn't necessarily stop you from falling asleep because I fell asleep early today doing a sleep, a deep sleep whisper recording. Couldn't use it because it was just me snoring after a few minutes. It lasted about an hour and a half, (laughs) the recording, but uh, it was a mixture of me snoring and me mumbling so it was like and then like you hear me go like that so I'm going to do my very best to keep myself awake whilst I record this I might have to splash cold water on my face, but I am determined because I've been falling asleep a lot making relax, uh, making sleep sessions, and uh, it's not not ideal. But it does show how boring they are and how maybe relaxing they are if I'm falling asleep myself while I'm making them and I'm actually talking at the same time so imagine if you're just lying on your bed listening not having to do anything you know because I've got this the screen shining on me the lights are on you know I've got all this equipment and I'm talking as well and I'm still able to fall asleep And it's not because I'm a great sleeper, it's just I sent myself to sleep, talking. So this stuff does work. It works on me, it works on anybody. You know, if you can fall asleep while you're actually doing something, and when you're not doing anything, it's just so much easier. And I think maybe part of it is, you know, it's not the most interesting thing to listen to. So you're lying in your bed, you know, you've, when you lay down on your bed, your body automatically relaxes. It's just a natural response to lying down. 
your head touches the pillow and your mind starts to slow down. And it's not, you know, it's not some kind of uh, magical response. And basically, if you've got the lights off and you close your eyes, there's less stuff, there's less stimuli. You haven't got the visual stimuli, you haven't got the physical stimuli of moving around. Uh, touching things, sitting down, standing, walking, picking things up, all that stuff. So that's physically, you're just lying there. Visually, you know, you might be lying down on your bed and it's during the day. You haven't got a light on, but you can still see light through the curtains maybe. And you can see a little bit of light through the eyelids I mean the eyelids are you know great for protecting the eyes to a degree but doesn't keep out a huge amount of light see I've got my eyes closed now and I can it's just light it's not as light as it is with my eyes open but I can see the light bulb and I can see the light shining through my eyelids because they're only thin but my eyes aren't doing anything when my eyes are closed when my eyelids are closed there's some light but that's it I can't I'm not stimulated by anything I want to say stimulated it's not about getting all excited you know I'm not looking at a television screen or looking at my table and thinking oh brilliant and you know getting a big, some kind of endorphin rush. It's not that. It's stimulation. It's visually. It's just what you see. It doesn't have to be exciting. But it does activate the brain. So when you've got your eyes closed, there's less going on. You're lying on a bed. There's pretty much less going on, but... It's something, I think when you lie, well, when I lie down, of course, we're all different, but I really enjoy lying on my bed most of the time. It's a release, even if it's sometimes I lie down for five minutes just to enjoy the process of letting go. So... My body doesn't have to do anything. I'm not I'm not demanding anything of my body. So with our eyes we kind of you don't have to put a lot of effort in. Maybe if you're reading or you're searching something you're using your eyes for that. But generally you look around and your eyes just do their job. Physically we perhaps have more of a tendency to push ourselves to, you know, walk in and perhaps run in for a bus or picking things up and we put a lot of a lot of uh, pressure on our bodies to just to be active, to to do the things that we need to be done. So we're very demanding on ourselves especially on our bodies physically now with our ears we hear what we hear we don't uh, you don't have to really do anything providing your hearing is okay I have partial hearing loss uh, in one of my ears but nothing like major major and it's so sometimes I'll, I'll concentrate a little bit but generally we don't have to do too much when it comes to hearing things we just hear what's kind of going on 
So again, when you're lying in your bed, okay, you're hearing my voice. If you're listening to me now, of course, you're hearing my voice. You may hear other sounds in the background. Um, my neighbour downstairs has got a little bit of music playing, but it's not loud. I don't know if the microphone even picks it up. You might, you know, there might be the odd dog barking in the background or a car going past. My question is, how did the car get into my flat? Get out of my flat and that dog, take the dog with you. So there's always going to be the odd sound. And what's very strange about ears, and I've discovered this lately. It's a phenomenon that I didn't realise before is because I, s I spend a lot of time uh, in and out of whatever you want to call it, trance or hypnosis or whatever you want to call it, but altered states where, because when I'm doing a recording, when I'm making a relaxation session, sleep session, I'm doing what I'm talking about in that moment so just as uh, when I was talking about eyelids and closing your eyes and I was doing it and I was focusing on the light that I could see through my eyelids and when I focus on relaxing your shoulders for example I'm also doing that so I'm not just sitting at a table reading a script like a story, you know, just um, actually living it with you. And of course, we all feel differently. We all have different physical and emotional responses to words and to whatever we do. You know, we're different people. However, I do get a sense that with these recordings there is a connection a positive it can only be positive a positive connection where not only the fact that I'm doing what I'm talking about comes through in energy almost sort of comes through you know the computer sounds weird but and then it you know it comes out of the speakers or out of your headphones into your earlobes and it, it's just that little added extra and it's almost like you know whether consciously unconsciously that it's more and just words it's more than just listening to someone reeling off a bunch of uh, like a script you know and there are lots of hypnosis scripts that I could read and I never do I never read a hypnosis script I do read hypnosis scripts don't get me wrong I'm not going to lie there I've got books but I don't read them out you know I'm not reading as I'm speaking and you know because this is a subject that I study and I have been studying for 20 years for fun really because I it's just it is fun with the hope that I would absorb whatever is necessary in order to then produce something like a recording that can have the, the the needed response that you require the needed energy the you know adequate help in relaxing and drifting to sleep that is required by yourself as you listen to my voice now 
with the ears, what I've noticed with my ears is there's a there's a point where when I'm drifting. So you know that drifting where you, you're there, you're listening to my voice. You kind of it becomes a little bit foggy in a sense, a little bit foggy, a little bit. It might even seem as though my voice is a little bit further away, and perhaps you start to not even take any notice so much of the words that I'm using so much as the tone of my voice and as that fogginess creates almost like a line a line that you know that when you cross that line you're going to be in that zone between being awake and being asleep and it's a place that we all go to every day at least twice a day it's good to be more you know the more times it depends on how many times you wake up and go back to sleep But every time you go to sleep, you go through that little area where you're neither awake nor asleep. And every time you wake up, you also travel back through that area where you're neither asleep nor awake. And it gets to the point where when you're in that area, whichever part uh, not shouts loudest but is most attractive to you or attracts you, needs you, wants you, encourages you you kind of go in whatever direction is most attractive to yourself for example if you're in that zone now between being awake and being asleep now you might want to continue to listen to my voice. Or you might want to enjoy more of that feeling of drifting and falling asleep. And in that zone, in that zone, that area, you almost go in and out of being asleep and being awake drifting and dreaming because drifting really is just dreaming when you're kind of half asleep it's daydreaming I guess or night dreaming but let's say daydreaming it is kind of like a daydream and a daydream if you're sitting in a chair with your eyes closed daydreaming or with your eyes open even there's not really a lot of difference between that and when you're asleep as far as you're you've drifted and your mind has moved towards sleep and with that is that creativity you know the the place where it, pretty much anything is possible so when you do have these drifting daydreams you could go in any direction and one way of actually making your sleep time more enjoyable Maybe the day you know, dreaming slate state as you drift into sleep is the more positive, the more time you spend 
creating positivity. When you're awake, the more positive you're likely to feel when you're asleep. I want to say create positivity. Uh, for me, I listen to positive recordings. I mean, this, I guess, is a positive recording. It's positivity. Um, but, you know, I, it's about listening to something maybe that makes you feel good. And that's doesn't have to be listening. You could read something. You could something that's uplifting but at the same time maybe a bit educational maybe goes against how you would naturally feel or how you've been taught to believe in the past and then changes how you feel into a sense of positivity you know, so increases your positivity by embracing it, really. And as I said that, I started to think, that's kind of what I'm doing, in a way, is during the lead up, the relaxation process, the chatting, the moving into that zone between being awake and being asleep and then allowing yourself to drift into the sleep. It's almost like you've got that positive energy right from the start and you bring your own positive energy as well which allows that positivity to grow and to have a, a really useful effect upon your ability to relax so deeply in your body and in your mind and to move when you are ready into that foggy area where you're neither awake nor asleep. You're just, I suppose it's a little bit like floating, but and when you're in that zone, that area, you kind of leave your body behind. I don't mean this in a spiritual way, but your body doesn't join you when you're there. It really is just like your essence, your your being is there. But your body and your mind as well just doesn't really join you because it's not needed. Because nothing you're not required to do anything you don't have to do anything physically you don't have to see anything you don't have to hear anything you haven't got to taste or smell anything you haven't got to think about anything and that's why it's so it's a quite a nice safe space to dwell you know, you can stay there maybe for a little while. So there's no rules to say that you have to move forward into sleeping unless you want to, or unless you just naturally allow the processes, the organic processes, to just do what they do naturally you know you just forget relaxed completely in your body in your mind and eventually you drift off and you fall asleep just the natural process without any 
effort. In fact, effort doesn't doesn't help sleep in any way. The only effort required when you listen to my recordings is just to press the play button. That's it. That's the only effort. And what I've noticed is when I'm in that zone and that area, that foggy bit between being asleep and being drifting, you know, so you're awake and you're drifting and that area, that foggy area where the attraction, it's almost like there's a magnet in the sleep area sort of drawing you closer. What I've noticed is when I'm in there, my eye, my ears seem to stop working. And I don't know if this is the same with other people. And I'm not sure if it's just as I enter that zone or maybe, you know, I get further. But it seems like the closer I get to falling asleep, then my ears just stop working. I mean, they are, I mean, physically they're still working. You know, it's still, they're still there to, you know, to help you if you need them. They're still there to keep an eye on everything, not an eye, but an ear on everything. But I noticed because there's a gap, there's a process when coming back from the drifting, I want to kind of drift back back to consciousness when I'm in that zone I notice sometimes that I'm aware more aware of what's you know around me and the last thing to kick in to to work is my ears so I'm aware and then my hearing comes in and I can hear which means things like background sounds, just standard background sounds, can't really affect us in the way that perhaps we used to believe. It's almost as if once you've crossed that, area, that threshold moving towards being asleep that you no longer you don't need certain things your hearing, your sight your physical movement it's almost like it's not really relevant anymore So there's something quite nice. I, I, I'll be honest, I quite like the drifting part. Going in and out of almost falling asleep, sometimes even dreaming. And then sort of waking up a little bit. Feeling so relaxed. And realizing that like wow I just drifted off but I didn't know that I drifted off like how did that happen how did I move from here to there so smoothly because you move from being awake to drifting to being asleep so smoothly it's almost the smoothest journey in the world there's no other smoother journey to the point where I guess there might there must be a point where you don't even know anymore 
if you're awake or if you're asleep. But then maybe it's not as simple as that. Maybe it's more a case of you're so relaxed in your body and in your mind. You're so relaxed that you just don't care. You generally don't care if you're awake or if you're asleep. It doesn't matter because you feel so relaxed, so comfortable and peaceful and you know because you can feel it that you're in a safe space and that knowledge allows you to open up it allows the the door to sleepiness to open up because when you feel safe those natural processes like sleep happen so smoothly it's almost as if it's an invisible process and you drift and your mind starts to think about stuff but it's not really your mind as opposed to a dream state and in that dream state you may become aware that you're lying on your bed and you drift into sleep and you feel relaxed you can't hear anything you can't see anything and even though you feel relaxed you can't necessarily actually feel anything and that's okay because you feel that sense of confidence within you that comes from a lifetime of being able to sleep naturally and that's regardless of what kind of sleep that you've had lately before you decided to listen to me and let go completely Because we've had so much experience of relaxing, so much experience of drifting, so many examples in your life of when you lie down. And you just you just drift away. And you don't need to remember how good it feels for you to let go. And to embrace your ability to relax so completely as you drift even further into that sense of comfort. Which naturally leads you along the path 
the woods drift in into deep healing sleep. Drift in into deep healing sleep. feels really nice. It feels really nice to let go. To really, really let go. Completely. feeling just to be able to enjoy being you to experience this sense of A sense of less happening. It's almost as if you're in this big hall and the lights are being turned off at the back of the hall and the space is getting smaller because there's less lights on. to the point where you realise that the area where it's dark is much bigger than the area where there's light and the area where it's not lit feels so attractive and so calming so peaceful really peaceful as you allow yourself As I count down from fifty down to one, you can allow yourself to drift even deeper. And with every number, you can go twice, become twice as relaxed and twice as sleepy. With every number you hear me say, twice as relaxed and twice as sleepy. Now, fifty. Seven forty.
Twenty. Two. 
côté. Oh. Cool. 